will speak about Drupal as a graphics platform. Okay, so the uh, influx of people appeared to stop, so we can uh, start now. Uh, what does it really mean, Drupal as a graphics platform, as I have been asked yesterday? It's not like Drupal as something like Flickr or a uh, picture aggregation website. It's more about uh, the graphics module I have developed for Drupal in uh, the frame of uh, the Google Summer of Code 2007. Uh, I was working with uh, Simon Hobbs and Gerhard Killes writer under their provision. They were my mentors in this project. And uh, I have been developed a graphics uh, a drawing module. I will uh, give the URL for the project later. As well as an SVG uh, drawing toolkit for this module. In this talk, I, I really don't like long talks. It's dark. I always fell asleep, so I don't intend to keep it very long. Uh, I will keep to these topics. First, I, I don't know what your level of knowledge is about SVG. I, it's not, it's, it's, everybody has heard about it, but it's sort of a, a vague knowledge. So I'll I start with an introduction to SVG. I will leave out almost completely the specifications. I will mention conclusions, um, some thoughts, but I will leave out the specifications and references because you can read up that on the internet and it's just boring. So I'll keep that to minimum. And then I will explain uh, what the drawing module is about, uh, what it contains, what you can use it for, potentially. So give some ideas what you can use it to develop and base uh, stuff on it. And what my further thoughts were, uh, where I'm going to head with this module, and what direction. So let's start with SVG. SVG is a specification of the World Wide Web Consortium. It's a language to describe two-dimensional graphics and graphical applications in XML. It's a very compact uh, way of saying what it really is. It's a vector graphic language. Um, probably you all know what vector graphic means, so I don't need to explain that. In XML, it's fairly simple. Uh, it's a specification. Uh, the SVG 1.1 is a recommendation since 2003 January. So if you consider that we are living in 2007, you already see that there is some uh, uh, glitch in the system. It's a very slow process. Uh, it has already been adapted to uh, or used by mobile devices quite broadly, but not really on the World Wide Web where it was intended for. And uh, W3C is uh, trying to extend the 1.1 specification into the direction of uh, multimedia with the specification 1.2, but they don't expect to release uh, a recommendation or something until next year. So. I wouldn't really bother about it. If you are interested in SVG, I strongly recommend Carto.net with SVG, uh, with JavaScript, uh, mainly in focusing in the area of cartography and the cartography applications, maps, charts. Uh, of course, the, the, uh, the W3C website, svg.org, and probably these blogs or other websites. But if you just Google for SVG, there are a lot of blogs that do it. And as Robert mentioned it yesterday, this is, uh, well, for me, it was a very funny sentence to read. It was one of the headlines in an O'Reilly article <coughs> that vector graphic of the future, which future is now, five years ago. I'm not sure if you really noticed this future is really banging our door. Why did they have these thoughts? SVG is, is good. The idea of SVG is not bad. It's lightweight. It's vector graphic. So to describe any graphical element, you just describe it as you do it in real life. Draw a rectangle here with this size, and you just write that in XML, basically. In raster graphic, what you see, uh, what you see in, in, in the format still contains what values. And this is a completely different way of, of describing your graphics. Also. It's uh, not suitable for certain purposes. If you have something that cannot be described by functions, by explaining, like a real life picture, it's not really going to work in SVG. It 
it cannot really be described in vector graphics. If you have an extra form, though, a graph, uh, a map, which can be described with simple shapes, in that case, it's good. Sometimes it is smaller to describe graphics in SVG. Uh, they use it in many, many articles and arguments, but it is often not the case. So one has to be really uh, clear in where you should use and where you should not use SVG. SVG is zoomable. Vector graphics, which means that you describe the lines, the shapes, so you can actually zoom in because the description is going to be still valid. If you zoom into a corner, you will just enlarge the corner. It's uh, going to recalculate the, the plots for you and you can enlarge, shrink without losing quality. It's what you really need on the web. If you are developing something for mobile devices, smaller screen, larger screens, you will need to enlarge or shrink your graphics. Uh, with SVG, you can do that without losing quality. It's XML. It's simple text. You can search it. Uh, Google cannot really parse. I'm not very clear in this area, but as far as I know, Google cannot really parse Flash, or if you try to parse a Flash-based website for text, you will encounter serious difficulties. It is probably possible, but slow, because you have to interpret the Flash, which is a binary format. It's painful. XML is simple. It's text. It is structured. So if you want to restructure it for accessibility, for visually impaired people to understand what's there, it is possible because it's XML. Internationalization, uh, internationalization uh, UTF-8 encoding, uh, you have a broad range of tools to edit it because it's simply XML. Uh, you can manipulate uh, with the standard API, the DOM API, you can manipulate it, and you can alter the visual representation simply with CSS or other style sheet things. Uh, there is one attribute or two attributes that I would really highlight in SVG. One of them is, is the view box attribute, which uh, I will not really show what it is, but it is cool. It's basically the ability to redefine the coordinate system in which you work. Why, does it, why is it good to, to redefine the coordinate system in which you work? Because you can enlarge and shrink. If you, if you have abstract coordinate system for your graphics and you say but that your, your main coordinate system that actually you, you put your, your view box on is smaller or larger, that you can do freely without limits. So practically SVG has a limitless magnification uh, ability. Whereas in, in Flash, for example, um, which later I will compare SVG to a bit, there are limits. And the other feature, which is basically derived from the XML structure, is AJAX possibilities. Since it's XML, since it's simple text, you can exchange certain parts while on the fly, while you're browsing, while you have the, the browsing window, and you can alter your graphics, which is very useful, very often in cartography applications, graphs, you name it. It's really on the ideas. Uh, about the size, this is uh, a very typical graph for this project because mainly I was aiming at solving somehow this. I lacked the graphs from Drupal. So it would have been really cool for me if I see statistics for my page on Drupal. I don't have to subscribe to Google Analytics or anything. I see it on my page, but it w is not really possible. You probably know. So uh, this. I have plotted both in PNG and in SVG. Uncompressed size without gzip is almost the same. So PNG is a very good uh, algorithm to compress bitmaps. But if you compress it with gzip, which is a very good compressor for text, it is available for Apache, for example, to uh, have gzip uh, compression for your transmissions. It is basically half the size of PNG with the same compression. This is how it looks like. This is a blue rectangle described in uh, SVG. You see the rootmost element, the SVG tags, 
and here you have a rectangle. It's fairly simple, it's very clear. You also have this style element, which basically you can alter from CSS. In, in the actual module, it's, it's different because of uh, some browser issues, which I will talk about later. I had to include uh, namespace declarations before the tags, but it, you will understand it most probably. When I'm talking about SVG in this presentation and in regard of this module, I talk about inline SVG. There are two main categories of, of SVG. One of them is in a file format, and one of them is inline. In the file, it's, it's in the file. You open it with the browser, it works. Inline SVG is a bit difficult. It's a bit different. It means that you embed the SVG into your page. It's, a, it's very different because many browsers, for example, they claim that they have SVG support, but they don't support inline SVG because they cannot interpret the XHTML and uh, having something else, something, some other XML embedded into the XHTML. For example, Conqueror. Conqueror claims that they have SVG support. You can open an SVG file. You cannot check the demos with Conqueror because it doesn't support that. Uh, the SVG 1.1, I'll just quickly run over what it supports, what kind of elements has. It has a bit broader range of uh, vector graphic elements than... Uh, he's one of my mentors, Gerhard Kieletreiter. <laughs> Hello. Uh, supports a bit a broader range of elements than uh, Flash. It has rectangles, ellipses, circles, lines, polylines, polygons, uh, shapes, a lot of, and also grouping elements. It supports text, of course. It has a very serious drawback, in my opinion, in text, though. It doesn't wrap automatically. You cannot define a box of text in which it will wrap the text around. So you have to do some tricks there. Uh, this is a, a serious problem. You can apply filters to your graphics and they thought, the consortium thought that multimedia is a good idea to develop SVG in, uh, in, on two, in that direction. I do not necessarily agree there, uh, but it is going to come in 1.2, embeddable video and audio. Why is it not a good idea? Because Flash is for animations, because it is simply a lot better supported already, it is a uniform platform for animations. Simply, there is not much space there for a new specification in that area. And SVG, in my opinion, is not very strong in breaching into new fields. And historically also, and by design, Flash is better for media. Flash has a definite advantage on um, being better known. Uh, Flash plugin is basically everywhere. Though yesterday I, I have been confronted. I, I got this uh, from articles on the web. There was not much contradiction on the number. But recently, yesterday I was confronted with a, a German uh, web statistics aggregation site in which they claim that 50% of the people has the Flash, the Macromedia plugin installed. So uh, this number maybe means that from, I don't know, uh, so there might be a bit of change. I thought it's good to mention that. Uh, while SVG has an option for Explorer because most of the other browsers support inline SVG by default, which is very cool. Uh, the other plugin has like 10, 20% penetration, which is not that bad actually. On the other hand, next year Adobe will drop the support. So SVG is going to be a big... Uh, Bit of a hole, though. There is another plugin uh, being developed. It's at uh, 0.6 or 7 version. Hopefully, that can solve it. Uh, most of the arguments against uh, SVG is it doesn't have a self-running executable. A flash, you can run on your Windows machine. You cannot run on your Linux machine, though. But well, since SVG, in my opinion, is more like a graphics format to describe graphics, you can just open it with any any uh, graphics applications. SVG has uh, a definite advantage on, on the resolution because with Viewbox, 
you can have an infinite resolution of magnifications, and it is an open and readable everywhere, readable everywhere, and platform independent specification. I cannot do flash on my Linux box. I would love to do vector, gra vector graphics developing it, but it's not possible. SVG, it is. Okay, let's move on to the drawing module. What it really is. The drawing module has two main parts, two main files actually. Uh, right now, if you download the module right now, it's going to contain a lot of demo files, demo modules, because uh, this is an API. This is an interface in, uh, which helps you create. Basically, you, you have the structured array, like a forms API like array, and there you have the graphics as an output. It is done by first you have the drawing module, the drawing dot module which is completely toolkit independent. It is using the Drupal render to assemble, uh, to parse the array recursively, and it equips it with uh, the theme functions, which are then to be found in SV the svg.inc, which are the, the toolkit, which are actually assembling uh, the, the XML. This is why, why Vector Graphics is good, because this picture is basically unreadable, and this is raster graphic. Okay, I, I could have done it at a bit, bit better resolution, not with DIA, but I do not have any other tools. This is just trying to uh, explain what the process is. First, you have the structured array uh, in, a, in a hook canvas function. Uh, this is getting processed by three functions. They, they're basically the analog of the form of a Drupal render, a Drupal, uh, uh, yeah, the analog of the form of the uh, functions, but a bit simpler because we don't need so much uh, stuff in there. And then it gives it to Drupal render, which is recursively rendering. And here, this part is the SVG include file because when it gets to the theme function, the theme function will tell yeah, I mean, the theme drawing uh, function, which is to be found in uh, the drawing module, tells and checks what, what are the preferences for you, in what way you want to represent your graphics, and then it will take the appropriate function from the toolkit file, which is only SVG at the moment, but it is open to any other format, XSLT, VML, whatever, you name it, takes it and Drupal Render will put it into actual output and return and display the graphics in line on the page. So you have only have to do is to set the structure by constructing this array. It's really simple. Call drawing get canvas and you have your graphics. That's it. This is how it looks like. This is how one line in a group looks like. You see here, this, the, the first structure, first uh, part is, is, is just a group element. This is a line, and this is how you declare uh, the, the attributes. It resembles forms API. I say forms API because that was the original idea, and the, the syntax a bit resembles it, but it has, except for Drupal render, no relation to it, really. And this, you have to put it into whole canvas, all these areas, and you're done. Uh, if you if you get to the uh, project website later, there's a documentation page and all the syntax is explained. That's why I, I don't want to go into details because it's pointless here. It's available. You can do with the, the SVG include file. It has uh, toolkit functions for all the shapes and geometries described in the 1.1 specification. So you have rectangles, ellipses, blah, 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 blah. You have a lot. I just remind reminding me of uh, this picture. When I was assembling my presentation, I just went to my demo website. I copied the source of the, the graphics. I put it into a file, opened it with Inkscape, and exported it to PNG. No need to take screenshots or something. Just copy the source, 
and you have a graphic stuff. This is a very big advantage, in my opinion, for SVG. Uh, then there is Path. Path is also uh, an SVG uh, shape, but it's, it's worth to mention because most of the time if you are assembling a complex graph, complex, complex graphic something with straight lines connected with arcs and, and stuff going on, you are going to use Path. Path has a lot of points, so if you try to assemble it in a structured area, that is going to take a lot of space. And therefore, I have implemented two ways of declaring a path. One of them is an explicit implementation, exp and one of them is implicit. The implicit is, well, I, I'm not, might use the wrong words here, I'm not quite sure. Explicit means that you basically, into the array, you, you say points, and then you just plug all this. this these are the coordinates. It says, let's move the pencil to the 94 point something to here. This is, the, this is the, the coordinates, and then connect it to blah, 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 blah. You have the option to put this directly into the array. And, but then you have to declare that this is an explicit declaration of the path. Otherwise, you can construct it in a machine-friendly way by having uh, implicit declaration, like point one, point two, point two, uh, attribute for that point, which is what, what should it be, move pencil or connect and stuff like that. All this is described in the specification, but the point is that there's a machine-friendly way and there's a, a user-friendly way if you try to put your existing graphics into the array. You don't have to re-parse it and restructure it because it just reads it in. And also you have the option to have a file uploaded and it will just embed it in line. It just basically reads in the file and puts it in there. So it's not very difficult, but uh, it's useful sometimes maybe for you. One potential uh, usage I saw was graphing. I really liked the, 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 the graphing support in Drupal when I started to become familiar with it. And this is, for example, th this is one of the example usages for this module. You can have graphs, or statistics, whatever. Uh, let's go. The graphing module is a separate module from drawing module, but it is it is in the same package. You can also install it, but it well, it is not the same. So it's a bit separate. Uh, of this, I don't. Think that there is. It, it, I am still altering a bit the API, so there is no official release of the, dra the of the graphing module. I said is because I want to show that this is still a work in progress. I see the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not the train, but still, the syntax of this is similar to SWF chart. I don't know how many of you actually knows uh, SWF chart. Do you know it? Good. Uh, the syntax is basically that you have two arrays, a config array, a chart array, you assemble these, you pass it on to the, the, uh, the charting function, the, the hooks, and then you get back the flash for SWF charts. I, I think it's a very straightforward syntax, and I find no reason why to alter this, so I am aiming to implement something very different, very thin, because I, I see no reason why not to. And I have my own hook function, which, in which you can put the type of the graph, and there you have the, your graphs. You can have a bar chart. This is actually bar and line chart because it's, it looks a lot better than if it were simply a bar chart. Uh, you will be able to have x ticks, y ticks, uh, smaller ticks for every second, which are smaller, and blah, blah, blah. Labels on each axis. There's not much to say. Also, line chart. Uh, these are the bars, and these are the lines. If somebody would ask, this is a pie chart. You can do it in different colors, of course. And stack bar. I haven't really seen this one, but I thought it's quite cool. You just add the values up, and you can compare the size. Uh, Usage is for drawing module. One of the requests was that if it's possible to do something like tech cloud, 
but a bit cooler. I, I honestly, I don't really like Tech Cloud because I find it a bit uh, useless. But if you want to represent your taxonomy, of your vocabulary in a graphic format, you just uh, put it in as a pie chart. And we, there's a module called Tagadelic. It's possible. Uh, I have there's there's a demo for this inside the package. You can try how it's done. It's possible. Of course, it will be an SVG. You can represent your size, size statistics. Uh, this one, however, I'm not sure how much uh, data Drupal aggregates as uh, statistics. But there is a reason that we, we are using external servers for it. It might be a lot. So for long-range statistics, the overall idea of having your site collecting the statistics might be wrong. But for short-term statistics, uh, daily spam rate or comment rate, it can be very useful. Cartography applications, you want to display maps, uh, you want to put nodes on the maps, whatever you can think of. This module is an API, so it doesn't give you these things. It just gives you an interface that you can, hand, you can create graphics a very easy way. Some I think Simon was the one that actually mentioned to me that the e-commerce uh, developers, some of them was interested in the module because they wanted to have a dashboard to represent the, a lot of graphs and, and information. So what it really helps you to accomplish on your websites is to display information visually. You have a lot of numbers in, in a time span and you want to really see what it means. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of numbers. This is a map, also an SVG. Uh, limitations, it's a very key issue. Uh, when I was preparing this presentation, I was uh, getting a little bit upset because it's not really clear if it's going to work or not. I won't lie, it's, it's not entirely clear. There are issues with the browser compatibility, browser just as an example, if you open one of the demos in uh, Safari, it, as it turned out yesterday, the text doesn't show up. Though, uh, f no, in Firefox, did I say Safari? Anyway, in Firefox, if you open it, the te text doesn't show up. I don't know why. Uh, Opera supports it completely. Uh, Safari 3, the beta version, supports it also completely. So there is a progress on the alternative browsers market in the direction of supporting it natively, which is a huge advantage, advantage for simple graphics over Flash is not really, uh, because of the opens, openness, uh, because it is easy to embed and it's small. Internet Explorer doesn't support it, and there is a lot of question mark in, in the area if it's going to support it at all in the, in the future. The developers, I have been doing some research on the Microsoft forums and blogs. Uh, the developers are receiving a tremendous amount of requests in this area and they're acknowledging this request. So they see that there is a point in developing towards this, but never ever make a clear statement if they are going to support it in the next versions of Explorer. My, my thought would be that there might be something in IE8, but seeing the adoption rate of IE7, <sighs> no comment on that. Uh, speed. Even if you have SVG support, the rendering engine is, is slow. It is noticeably slow even, even on, uh, if you have a dual core machine. You will notice that it's something different than just a picture. And I'm not sure why. Probably it's because the Gecko rendering engine behind most of the browsers. But if you open the larger graphics uh, on Firefox, you will notice that something is not right. It's not as smooth as you're used to. And this definitely has to be improved in order to have SVG more widely acceptable. But as I said, there is not much push from the developer side, from, from our side, web developers side, towards the, the uh, browser uh, programmers to actually make it happen. They have the support, so we could use it, but there are not many applications that I really need it. So 
there is a lack of demand behind it. The plugin penetration, as I have said before, next year in January, we will be without a supported uh, browser. And if the other one is not up, uh, you can, I forgot the name, uh, the other one, you can check it on svg.org. They have updates every, uh, well, they have updates on it on every uh, minor release. If that's not reaching a stable version, then I don't know. Layers have been a pain, a huge pain uh, in SVG for me. SVG paints like a painter on a canvas. It paints on what is being done first. So you cannot really say that this, okay, this is after in the XML, but it should go first. I mean, that, that would make sense. XML is not really about the order, more about the structure, not, not the order of elements below each other, but the depth uh, structure, in, in my opinion. And there is no Z-index in SVG, and there's not much talking of that. They are going to implement it. Hello. Uh, so it's, for simple applications, it is a straightforward and good thing to solve the problems. But to build uh, complex applications, it's a bit not, it's just not mature enough. The progress is there. The browser support is being developed. But there's the word being. It's, it's a continuance. It's still progress. However, if, if Drupal moves quickly into this area, it can be one of the leading uh, open source uh, collectives that are trying to make this happen and they will pro when when it is actually becoming more and more widely accepted Drupal is going to be able to ship complete applications and tools for SVG which is going to give Drupal developers if this is actually going to work so if, if you believe it then it is going to give you a lot of advantage or not it's a risk I am intending to develop it further because the, the graphing, the drawing part can is separated from the SVG. So this is on one side bad on SVG and one side the drawing which is toolkit independent. I am planning to implement the filters from the specification which are going to allow the graphics, which are actually not supported in Firefox, uh, to have more, more elements in, in your structure. One of them is the depth the defines element, you can define items like gradients and then you just uh, reference to them later in your uh, graphics. And the use which is a template object, you can define objects and reuse them. JavaScript support is very important. Uh, I don't like JavaScript, I don't really know it either. Uh, jQuery is cool to, to use uh, JavaScript, but last time I checked, the, the because of the namespace change, I had to change the namespace from this simple SVG, bracket SVG something, to SVG semicolon, and then the real name for the, uh, the item. Uh, it was broken because of this change. At least it did not work. I did not inquire any further. I, should co I shall contact the jQuery developers to discuss it a bit, but it used to work. It might work. It would be cool if it would work. JavaScript, however, supports it, so you can alter it completely. You can make it completely interactive. It supports uh, all kinds of hover, uh, on-click, anything, events. You can drag it around the screen. Y really, the, the, uh, what you can accomplish with it is uh, only the limit of your imagination and browser support. Uh, I am intending to implement other toolkits as well, besides SVG. VML, for example. They had a, an SVG-like syntax before, uh, before SVG, before the specification. It's called VML. V doesn't stand for Windows. It stands for something else. Uh, it is supported by Explorer. 5 and 6, probably even in 7. Uh, I, I haven't heard about it before the project. I have heard about SVG, but not about this one. It's sort of a strange, well, not coincidence. It, it has been in the timeline, timeline is uh, as follows. Uh, Microsoft implemented the VML 
they have been using it for a long time. And then uh, the open source community thought that they would create something better. They made SVG, which is a better implementation without a doubt. But then they also decided that they're not going to support VML at all. So we end up with two formats and we're not using any of them. And the other toolkit-like thingy would be PHPGD, which is a different approach than vector graphics. Of course, I don't have to tell that, but uh, to handle PHPGD uh, by the drawing module, which could be a fallback on if you have a browser that doesn't support any of these. Actually, by, by fallback, I'm not sure if you knew that, for example, Google Maps uses SVG if you're using a uh, SVG compilable browser and VML if using Explorer. You can check the uh, project website on project drawing. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yep. Thank you. Well, uh, but dot graphs don't, I mean, caching, caching you, you need when you do, as, as my understanding was that caching you need when you do more database queries. So it's actually worthwhile to save it in, in one query where you can get it back. The graphics are mainly constructed from PHP, so it's a matter of CPU. If you store it in cache, then, uh, then it's, it's more like a memory uh, and disk reading issue. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, uh, there are more Drupal experts on this. I th but my, my thought is that it's not, there's no need for it. But I, I might be right. Is, is there somebody who, who knows? A, I'm sure there is a, somebody who knows a lot more. Yeah, but what is possible to, or could be a good a good idea, to uh, you you do your module. It it does it actually assembles the drawing, the graph itself, the SVG, and you save that into into a cache table, and when you draw it next time, you you have a feature of just take it from the database and display it. That might be a good solution. I'm not quite sure if it's worthwhile to do this, either than save the, the query result and rerun the drawing. It's just, uh, it also as Gabor said, it's just a pros uh, an API to, to assemble the drawing from the data. It's fast, it's very fast, because it's just uh, putting together an XML. Might be not worth the trade-off of using a database at all. I'm not quite sure, I'm not sure. But it's an interesting question. Um, have you calculated or tried um, if there is an advantage to using SVG over, say, PNG graphics? Um, yes. In which, in which it is an advantage to use. Yeah, uh, say, um, bandwidth? Yeah, if you have um, a, a huge a number of graphics on the same page, um, would there be an advantage or would there be a disadvantage? I haven't calculated that. Uh, for speed, I did some measurements before before the application. Actually, it was uh, a lot faster than PHPGD to assemble the, the graphics. For bandwidth, I have done these the size calculations. So if it is worthwhile to use SVG because of bandwidth. Uh, What, when it is really uh, trading off is when you try to uh, alter one graph. To, to For example, to use a Ajax to, to alter one graph because then you don't have to redraw the whole stuff. Mm -hmm. Magnify, uh, enlarge the range, for example. Mm -hmm. Then it is good. Yes? As a, as a fallback for graphs that we do not support, it would be possible to generate a DLC or something like that. Uh, that's what... Uh, directly from the SVG.
Yeah, that's why I'm I'm planning to implement the PHP GD toolkit, yeah. as uh, because if if the Drupal senses that you're using a browser not supporting it, then it can just do it in something else. Yes, I I am I'm intending to work on this because that, that's one of the most important uh, steps. Yes. Yes, there is in 1.1. It's called Smile without the E at the end. And you can also use JavaScript for animation. In my opinion, SVG should not animate. It should not really do this fancy stuff because it's, it's, just, it's, it's a half a gut feeling and, and half the experience. Uh, because of the support main, mainly being so fragmented and the specific specification not implemented completely, if you are trying, these are on the edge on, on, on the specification limits of the browsers. And you are likely to encounter situations where it's not going to be supported. In mobile platforms, they mostly support a subset uh, of the full specification. It's called 1.1 Tiny. And that, as far as I know, it does not include animations. So if you want to really focus on something that is widely used, use JavaScript. Anybody else? OK, so thank you very much for your attention again. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content Drupal. If you want to build a web application, you've got to download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content Drupal. If you want to build a web application, you gotta download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal,